Hey everyone, it's the Schnakey back again with another video and today I'm doing a tech review video and I did the uh, Ashens hand actions there because I'm hoping that I don't ruin this genre for everybody on YouTube that enjoys watching these type of videos. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the GPD XD, in my opinion the best handheld emulation system on the market today. And Overall, I want to give my thoughts and opinions on why this is. I'm going to be reviewing it on three different categories, which you'll see on the side of the screen here. And those are durability and build quality, user friendliness and you know how easy the device is to use. And finally, the actual emulation itself and can it emulate games as well as it claims to. And most importantly, can it do the variety of um, systems that it claims that it can do. So we're going to be taking a look at all of these categories and I'm going to be giving it a rating from not very good all the way to excellent. Uh, not very good, good, very good and excellent being the, the main ones because I like to keep a simple rating category. I don't like to overcomplicate things. But as you'll be finding out, the GPD XT will do quite well on a lot of these categories. So let's take a look and uh, stay tuned. So starting off with durability and build quality is one of the main reasons that I actually took note of the GPD XD to begin with and that's its really nice clamshell design that it has and as you can see here not dissimilar to a Nintendo 3DS. If we take a look at the front of the device first of all we can see that it has two analog sticks right here. It has a right R3 and an L3 which kind of simulate clicking down on these analog buttons right here. It's got a gamepad button which is actually used for mapping this gamepad here when you're in game. It's got a multitasking button for Android. It's got a power button, volume up and volume down which are pretty straightforward. And then you get down to this bottom part here which has a quite a nice directional pad here. And the directional pad is nice and spongy. It gives a fairly good feeling when you're actually pressing on it. Um, but I still kind of prefer to use these analog sticks in a lot of the PlayStation games. But there are some games like Crash Bandicoot, for example, which I'll be showing you later on, which actually I find the directional buttons to be better, just to get a bit of extra precision when you need it. On the right-hand side, we have our function buttons. We have X, Y, A, and B. And if you actually see there, they actually have the... Um, the PlayStation inputs mapped on there as well. So you've got triangle, X, square, and circle. Down the bottom, we have a start and select, which are always handy for most consoles. And you have a back button for the Android interface again, and a home button, which will always bring you back uh, to the main screen, the home screen on Android. Again, really useful to have them, and you do kind of um, you know use them quite a lot. Two speakers here, which sound very good. They are stereo, and they get you know very loud. I was going to say reasonably loud. They actually get quite loud, and the distortion is actually quite minimal on them. But I found for the most part that I was actually using the headphones. Uh, when I was playing this but if you do want to play sound through these speakers they are excellent and um, you know I do highly rate them. The screen as you can see is a 5.2 inch touch display and it allows you to navigate Android as you would on, an, on any smartphone. It has got good resolution. It's a 720p display and overall it's very nice for playing all of your games and even watching a few YouTube videos or movies if that's what you want to do on this thing as well. Flipping over onto the back side and you can see the various inputs that it has here. We have a uh, left and right R button, which is L1 and R1. These are in sensible positions, which is good. Uh, they're easy to get to. There's a nice click out of them. Uh, and overall very happy with those. These buttons, not so much. If I'm playing the console, and it's kind of hard to explain from this angle, but if I'm playing it like this, it's kind of a bit of a struggle to reach back to these, uh, especially when I want to have my hands here. Um, my, you know, I find myself clicking the outside one with with this part of my finger, so it's kind of hard to explain. But it's a bit of a it's a bit of a faff to actually reach around to these and click them. I would have preferred if they were maybe a bit closer here, or if they somehow managed to get them behind uh, the L1 and R1 buttons. But you know, it's one of the design choices I suppose they had to compromise on. Here we have a headphone jack for plugging in earphones uh, HDMI out which is very very handy I got a cable for this off Amazon for absolute pennies and now I plug it into my TV and I can get that uh, playing all my favorite games up on the big screen it's got a micro USB charging output which is good because most devices uh, still do use micro USB so you'll find you'll have a lot of them lying around the house and it has an SD card slot 
I've got a 64 gigabyte one in there and it uh, works with, I think it's up to 128 or 256 megabyte cards. Um, but for most people, they're probably going to be putting in something like what I put in, which is a 64 gigabyte card and it works flawlessly. And we'll be talking a little bit more about that as we go on. Nothing on the bottom here apart from a power LED. Now, the one thing I want to make note about this LED is if I close this here like that, you notice how it stays on. And the annoying thing about that is that if you have got this device, you know, laying around or whatever, and it's, you know, it's it's sitting on your couch or wherever you have it left down, that LED stays on all the time. So that's something to take note of. It kind of annoyed me, but it doesn't really affect me a huge amount because I find that I power it off when I'm not using it. But if it is in standby, that LED does stay on. I would have preferred if it was a flashing LED or, you know, a, a fading in and out um effect on it or something like that but just I, I don't think the the constant LED having it on all the time is uh, very good as you can see it's black and on the top it has got a glossy finish which means that it will uh, collect a lot of fingerprints and that's just an oils and things like that so it just goes with the territory of these devices uh, in terms of the other colors they come in they come in red and blue are the two other ones I've seen I've not seen any white ones but they may well um, have variants in those colors as well so overall very good on the build quality I have to give this um, a very good, and I'm going to come on to why I'm going to give it a very good and not an excellent just now, and I, I nearly skipped over this point. And that is because these buttons here in the front, I don't know, is it just on my unit or is it on every single one that you'll come across, but these buttons have a tendency to get stuck. The A and the X button have a tendency to get stuck in under the plastic, and I may not actually be able to show it to you happening now, but if I'm playing for a long time and I'm pressing on these buttons here, sometimes they have a tendency, as you can see there, now it's actually happened, they slip in under the plastic, okay, and then you have to kind of flick them out to unjam them, and it'll basically keep the button pressed down. Um, now this may be just on my unit, you may not notice this on yours, but it is a problem nonetheless and I, I thought I'd have to highlight it for people who are buying it. You know, you may never experience it. I've only experienced it around 10 times or so since I've had the console for, which is a year now. So it, it very rarely happens, but it does happen. When it does, it could be the difference between you dying in a game or whatever. But again, look, it's a cheaper device. It's, you know, not super expensive. So you're going to expect a few little manufacturing uh, flaws like that but as I said it doesn't happen very often it doesn't happen with any of the directional buttons or any of these um, including the Y and the B button which is unusual so it's just something to take note of um, and I think that uh, little defect combined with the the shoulder buttons being in a kind of an odd location back here I think those two things equate to you know a very good as opposed to an excellent but that really goes for any kind of cheaper um, manufactured product that is coming from China and places like that you're going to get little defects like that so overall guys this is going to be a very good for build quality and durability the clamshell design makes it very good for traveling and overall it's very easy to transport it around the place brought it on holidays with me recently and I have to say that it was excellent um, it would be thrown around in a bag and came out without it actually a scratch on it still looks like it's brand new so excellent for durability so the second category we're going to talk about today is the usability of the device. How user friendly is it? And on a whole, a very, very enjoyable experience here. As you can see, it's running Android 4.4.4. .4. So we're, we're running KitKat. And you might say to yourself, that might be a problem. Well, it's not because most of the apps on here will, are still supported by that version of Android. And the emulators in particular, actually a lot of the time prefer the older versions of Android because of the way they handle storage and um, moving stuff on to ROMs onto extern, external SDs and things like that. So overall, very good for that. Now if we go back home here using the navigational buttons you can see we have a kind of a main uh, hub or tile style system here and we got our games, emulators and applications. These can be changed around. I don't really use the emulator section. You're supposed to install them onto like a custom directory to get all your emula emulators to show up. I just put them under the uh, games category there. I find that to be the best option for me. Your applications uh, category has all the apps you have installed and as you can see here I have ES File Explorer on there. Now that comes on some devices by default. You will need a uh, some sort of a file explorer application if you're transferring ROMs around and um, juggling files and things like that. So very very important that you actually invest in something like that or rather invest but install something like that because you will need it. Um, you have got full um, Android settings there as you saw when I went into the advanced settings um, panel and you can also uh, install 
uh, flash store or SD store should I say on top of the internal flash because the ROMs will fill up very quickly especially if you're installing things like PlayStation ROMs you will need uh, additional storage okay so if I use the back button here as you can see I can navigate around using that and there's also a multitasking button which is very very useful to see all of the apps that I have running and of course I can clear the memory there as well uh, at the touch of a button. Uh, you've got Wi-Fi on this device which is obviously very important and the Wi-Fi speeds are you know fairly acceptable same as what you get on most Android phones. I find that I turn off the Wi-Fi when I don't need it um, simply because if I pull this down simply because it, it just saves battery you know if you're not using the Wi-Fi turn it off unless you're downloading ROMs you're not really going to need it and the Play Store I would turn off auto updates because a lot of the apps that are on here you won't need to update them bar maybe YouTube because you know I use YouTube sometimes on this if my phone dies or whatever so it is handy to have that so overall very nice to navigate around you can also of course use the directional buttons to navigate around and probably one of the best features of this is if I go into the internet here you can see there's actually a full QWERTY keyboard which makes it very very nice to actually um, type things okay getting some results there for Jiu Jitsu Double I'm not sure why that's coming up so overall a very very nice device to navigate around and then we come on to probably one of the biggest and most important points of this device the battery life I'm at 19% there at the moment. This device has an excellent battery. Now, me giving you stats about screen on time and all that stuff, you know, I could go into that for hours. I worked in a phone shop for a number of years, so um, I'm you know, quite into my mobile technologies, but I could go into you know, screen on time, you know, what's the best way to achieve the best screen on time. I'll give you a, a practical example, okay? So I was playing Crash Bandicoot when I started playing uh, the, the trilogy on this device and I was at just under 15% battery, I think it was like 13% and I had the Wi-Fi off, I was in airplane mode uh, as I do quite often and I was able to play for an hour and a half on around 13-14% battery life. So the battery life in this is excellent, okay, the practical usage of this is very good and I don't mean just opening and up browsing the web, this is actually intensive stuff running emulators, there is excellent battery life. So for train journeys, for long uh, bus journeys, whatever you're doing, this is the device for you. And that's the, one of the main selling points, and I don't think GPD push it enough, is that the battery life in this is excellent. Um, you know, They say it's easy to navigate around, it's easy to set up, it's easy to put ROMs on. That's all, all well and good, but the main point for me on this is the battery life is very, very, very good. And if you're looking for something that's going to last you, uh, this is the device to get, in my opinion. I think it's definitely um, the one to look at. Uh, as I said, the controls are very good and they can be used for navigating around if you don't want to use the touch screen, which sometimes it is a bit awkward, you know, to pick it up and to be actually, you know, touching on the touch screen. It's, some people prefer to use these directional buttons, but uh, in my opinion, that, that, that touch screen functionality is absolutely essential. The screen is a 720p screen. Colors are good. It may not be coming through too well here on the... Um, I know on my viewfinder it looks a bit washed out but definitely there is really good colors and uh, the 720p resolution is excellent you can of course turn on a, you know smoothing effects and things to make the emulators look nicer but in my opinion it's great just to have it as it is and everything looks fantastic um, so overall a really really good device um, to use for the everyday for everyday tasks and most importantly uh, for getting into your emulators is really easy you do need to get a file as explorer that works for you though because it is what you're going to be using to transfer around roms and things like that so overall for this section guys i'm going to have to give this an excellent because there's really not a lot that i can fault on it the complications with changing file uh, changing around file locations changing your rom paths for a person that knows what they're doing this should be no problem and even for intermediate users this shouldn't be a, a massive issue either so you know i have to give it an excellent in that regard the on screen um control the buttons here on the actual the physical buttons should i say are very good and the touch screen is very responsive and the keyboard is an excellent addition as well so overall very good in that respect as well and can be used as an everyday android device if you want to watch movies if you want to play music on it can do all of those things with the inbuilt speakers and the stereo speakers so it is a very very multifaceted device in in, in that respect 
So an excellent on this one, guys. We're now going to move on to probably what's the most important category. What I'm going to spend a bit of time on is actually the emulation itself. And I think I'm going to do some TV out recording for this because I don't, you know, showing you the games like this won't really do them justice. So I'd rather just actually show you the performance up on the big screen. So that's what we're going to show, show you next. So stay tuned. So now on to emulation and starting off we have the Sega Genesis and as you can see on the screen we've got some Sonic and Knuckles. Perfect emulation, great sound, great FPS, the way it's meant to be played and that goes for any Sega Genesis game that I threw at this thing. If you do notice a slight audio lag in the background that's actually down to the recording software that I used and not the emulation itself so just bear that in mind. Next up we have N64 and we've got Super Mario 64, a perfect emulation for Super Mario 64, the best I've actually seen on any device that I've ever used, including my PC, unusually enough, I know that sounds really bizarre, but this was actually really really good, it was so playable that I actually got through the first three levels uh, in really good times, and that goes for other games as well, if you're talking about Super Smash Bros, which I tried, which was really really good, GoldenEye ran really well, uh, considering it's a very difficult game to emulate. So overall I can't really fault it on its N64 emulation. If you're looking for a device that does N64 well, this could be the device for you. So definitely keep that in mind. So yeah, very good overall, can't fault it. And now we move on to Super Nintendo. And here I have Super Punch-Out playing for you. And again, a great emulation absolutely no issues whatsoever really good speed and you need that for a game like super punch out which you know re you know rewards good reactions so yeah again plays through the entire you know campaign of super punch out without any issues a really good emulation and that goes for any other super nintendo game that i threw at it as well really really good <laughs> Now we move on to the interesting ones, and this is, yes, PlayStation 1, and it works flawlessly. I'm going to put it like this. this. This should sum up my point pretty well. If you are looking for a device to play PlayStation 1 games on, your entire library of them, get the GPDXT. It emulates PlayStation 1 absolutely perfectly. I have not found one game that this thing does not chew up and spit out. It is absolutely brilliant. Just to put into perspective, you know, how good this thing is, I played through the entire campaign of Crash 1, 2 and 3 on this thing and it was just absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend it. It's, it's, it's just a great device for PlayStation 1. This is the game device that you want if those are the games you want to emulate. Really perfect, fantastic, can't compliment it enough. Now we move on to the final emulation example and that is MAME. If you're looking to emulate arcade games, which a lot of people are, this is the thing to do it on. It is fantastic, it emulates it perfectly. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs here ran at the perfect frame rate, sound was great and again I got through a good few levels on it just playing and having fun. Same thing goes for Metal Slug, which were the other games that I tried. I tried all the Metal Slug series, the original arcade series and they all worked perfectly. So a great arcade emulation on the whole. So there it is, my comprehensive review of the GPD XD. In my opinion, the best handheld emulation device out there for the price. Speaking of price, I paid around £160 for this when I got it off Amazon a year ago. The prices have gone up mainly down to the fact that the 16 gigabyte variants are very hard to get hold of. Now it's mainly the 32 gigabyte variants that you're going to see. So just be aware of that. It's something that you do need to take into consideration. So overall, you, you, you will spend a little bit more, but... If you can find a 16 gigabyte variant, try and get one of those because the money that you'll save on that, you can put towards an SD card. So overall, an excellent emulation device, and I highly recommend it for the build quality, for the battery life. All of those things make this one of the best out there. And hey, if you can find one better than this, let me know about it. Some people were talking about that bigger JXD device that has a bigger screen on it, but that's really not for me. I prefer something with a smaller screen and that's a little bit more portable, hence why I went for this here. So that's been the review. If you have any questions about this and want to ask any questions in terms of what the practical performance is like in scenarios that I didn't talk about, leave it in the comments below. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed the content that I put out and always turn on notifications simply for the fact that I don't know when I'm going to get to upload next, so when I do put a video out there, if you are waiting for the next instalment of whatever I'm talking about, the best way to get that is to actually uh, turn on notifications and you will know straight away. That's it. That's been my review. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, subscribe because we're all going to die anyways. I'll see you in the next video.